Films are supposed to keep us entertained, but also informed about how we live. That's the dual mission of the Roxbury International Film Festival. To tell us about this year's selections is our guest, the president and founder of the Color of Film Collaborative, Lisa Simmons. Uh, thank you for very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, this has been a number of years now. Go back to the beginning. Well, what got this all started? Wow, we are in our 19th year, which is crazy to think about that. And uh, it got started with Act Roxbury, actually. They're, they had a board meeting and they were saying, we should be doing a film festival. And it was exactly the same time that The Color Film was starting uh, an organization that supported independent filmmakers of color. And that was because we wanted to get people together to be creating their own projects. Directors meeting, actors meeting, producers. And so they reached out to Color Film and said, do you all want to co-sponsor and help with this festival? And so it started with a $5,000 grant and has now expanded from like 10 films to over 65. Well, the other thing that's important here, this is not just local stories or about people of color. This is independent film. Talk about the importance of that category, the dynamic. Right, so important, right? Because it's outside of the Hollywood purview and it's stories about everyday life, about your life, about other people's lives and cultures and individuals that you would never normally know about and, and and that's what I always tell people and I always say you know there are a lot of independent film festivals in Massachusetts and even in the Boston greater Boston area but there's never too many because we all we all have a different bent right we're all we're all telling different stories and for Roxbury it's celebrating people of color across the world so I always say go because you don't know when you're going to see these films again. And it gives filmmakers the opportunity to see their film on a big screen and in front of an audience that really, really is passionate about learning about what they have to say. Well, talk about one of the, the local topics being addressed. And this is going to be in the documentary in the opening night about the METCO program, the Voluntary School Desegregation Program. Right, on the line. Uh, really great documentary. I mean, one of the things about the schools. whole METCO and busing and all that Attention sort of thing is people constantly don't want to start, to always bring it up course. because it's sort of like Boston if needs to move beyond that. But it's really important to understand the history in order for you to move to forward, right? So this is a great documentary about METCO and about the program and how it started and sort of, you know, the ebbs and flows of a program that was that was created to really sort of give inner city kids an opportunity um, in schools outside of the Boston area, so to speak, in suburban programs. And how it worked and maybe how it didn't work. So, so yeah, that's part of our opening day programming. And we're going to bring up an excerpt from that. And I am opposed to forced busing for anyone. Forced busing should be abolished. It is a, a social experiment that has flopped and has polarized the people of this city and of this nation. I would come home off the bus and I would turn on the TV and you'd see angry people throwing rocks at the bus. It was crazy. Busing does not help anyone to get a better education. It does not improve race relations. It is probably the single most important cause of racial conflict and hostility in this country today. I, I guess another reason to be watching this film is, is that this program opens windows that we wouldn't be able to look through if it didn't exist. Oh, I love that. I love the way of thinking about it that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we have films that will educate you, that will inspire, inspire you, that will, you know, make you cry, make you laugh. Um, you know, and it's not, it's not entertainment, like you said in the beginning. Some of it is, of course, there are narrative features that are funny and fun, but for the most part, a lot of them, you'll learn something from it and you'll be inspired, like I said before about it, because it's so, some of these stories of these organizations or of individuals or of groups uh, is, is incredible. It's humbling to be able to watch what these filmmakers have done over the last 19 years. Well, talk, talk about the learning here, uh, a difficult topic, sort of a science health aspect here, uh, bone marrow transplants and what uh, happens when you're talking about, I guess, mixed race recipients or donors? Exactly. We have a film in the festival called Mixed Match and something I knew nothing about. It was one of the first films that came in uh, to be looked at and I was like, oh, this is kind of a long documentary. It's, I don't know if we're going to be able to fit it because, you know, the length of it is always difficult. Started watching it and was just amazed by this issue of mixed race people having difficulty finding bone marrow donors. 
because of the because of being mixed race, basically. And so there's a whole organization, and there's there are people here as well as in Massachusetts. This film is particularly is from Oregon. Um, that set up bone marrow registries for mixed race individuals. So we're going to be trying to do something like that um, at the festival because it's such an important topic and one that no one really has known about. There are some films about uh, music, uh, two of them at least, focusing on hip hop. And one in particular talked to me about this is really a documentary about one person, Domingo Gaiden. Foot, Footprints in the Concrete. Um, great film, local filmmaker. Uh, he's now since uh, moved out of the area, but. Really important film, just to basically, you know, his life growing up, you know, inner city Boston, and sort of how he transformed his life with music, and um, you know, it's a really, it's a really touching, really well put together and done documentary, and that's, and that's one of the things that we've been seeing a lot over these last 19 years is that local filmmakers are, in, you know, it's not just like they're competing with all of these filmmakers from all over the world. And that's what's wonderful. You know, we started 19 years ago and things were a little differently. And now they are telling these incredible stories. They are, you know, shooting incredibly. They are, you know, and it's really, really exciting to have the local filmmakers part of, still a big part of Roxbury. And, and this is a fascinating story because, you know, Domingo, he, he, he grew up in the sort of Baptist Pentecostal background. He goes down to, to the gangster rap route and, and then he, he circles back, circles back. To, to the church. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that that's, I think at this particular time, as we're, you know, we're talking about Black Lives Matter, we're talking about people in pain and really suffering and sort of, you know, him going back to that to say, you know, like, this is important and this is what, this is what raised me. And, you know, this is, this is where my life is going to go going forward. And I think that that's a really great story. And of course, the other hip hop uh, uh, entry here is take the T train, not the A train, but not the T train. Not the A train, the T train. Yes. No, the T, the you know Massachusetts T. Um, and all of these local bands and local musicians and people uh, that that you probably didn't even know about. You know, a great doc sort of tribute to them. So, so it's a, yeah, that's exciting. Another film that concentrates on, on one particular hit tune of what the 1930s or 40s. Body and Soul, and this is a whole crossover interpollinization. Talk about this. Place. So, Body and Soul, great film. We're really excited to have it. So, as I said, it's part of our opening day festivities, and it's at five o'clock on the twenty-second. And it's basically called Body and Soul: An American Bridge. Basically, the bridge between this song that was written um, by a Jewish composer and how it was um, how it was developed and, and performed in in African American. Uh, and songs music, and music, uh, and, and Ella was one of the of, of Coleman Hawkins greatest. was a standard right. too. Yeah, 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 incredible. So, um, so we're really excited to bring that. We're partnering and co-presenting that with the Boston so Jewish Film Festival, and we have a local uh, singer, Andrea Lyman, who's going to be performing the song before the screening happens, and then the director's coming in, and we'll have a discussion with him. There's another film that is going to be coming up. Is switching the topics here. Uh, this is about sports. Uh, I think the title was Sports in the Inner City, as they put it. Um, talk about that, because this is something, I, it's a fascinating topic. It's is this Out of Bounds? Yes, Out of Bounds, growing up in Boston. Out of Bounds, local filmmaker yes. also. Um, and it's great. We had a film a number of years ago called Madison versus Madison, which was about Madison Park's basketball team. And uh, one of the lead figures in that film is also in this film, Out of Bounds, Coach. And uh, right, it's really about uh, sports and the importance of it in inner city communities and to bridge the, you know, the, the outer outside world that gets, you know, really connected to, you know, your, your, the world that you're, you know, playing in basketball and then you're, and then you're, and then you have to, then you're out, you know, you're going back to your community. And no, it's just a, you know, he's a great filmmaker and he's been in our festival before and we're really excited to have that in. That's playing with Take the Tea Train because, you know, when you're programming a festival, you're always trying to pull these films uh, together under some sort of theme. So, so these two, I think, really marry each other and match each other really well. So they're going to be playing one after the other. Well, one other uh, current topic uh, that people would be interested in is immigration. You have a film addressing that uh, Fireflies. You know, we do have Fireflies, and Fireflies is actually part of a whole series of short films with the short program is called, is entitled America 2, 
and it has a question mark. And because there's a number of them that deal with this issue, and Fireflies is a film uh, by another local uh, filmmaker, and it's a, it's actually a silent film, and it tells the story of uh, you know an, an immigrant coming into a coffee shop community, and you know sort of you know sort of how that unfolds over the course of a you know a couple of hours as he's sitting there drinking coffee and um, and so it's it's incredible America I too is another uh, another film that from a local filmmaker who's now living in California that tells the story of of uh, of being deported and it's uh, it's really I mean I'm so glad we have an, a series of films that talk about these topics because I think it's really important It'll be a great discussion piece. And, and one other topic that's addressed by at least one of the short series, gentrification and displacement, and is something I think that has to do with uh, students at the Helen Y. Davis Leadership Academy School in Dorchester, the anti-displacement camp. Yes, and so that's, thank you for bringing that up because we have a whole series of youth films. We always do youth films and support our youth filmmakers. And that's, um, that's happening on, uh, I think it's Saturday mo Sunday morning. And it's really, important to do that. So that particular film, yes, great film, uh, you know, about these kids becoming active, not necessarily really knowing what it was to be politically active in a community. And, and uh, this film sort of takes you through their process of becoming politically active on That's the whole issue. That's why it's called issue. the Leadership Academy. Right, exactly, <laughs> yeah. um, of displacement. And it was just, it was like, yeah, we, oh, we totally have to screen this. This is this is wonderful. Well, speaking of leadership, you, you gotta tell our viewers, in case they didn't have it already, uh, when this starts, when it ends, and where you get the, the, the details. So the festival actually began, the opening day of the festival is June 22nd, but the day before that, we're doing a pre-festival during Juneteenth at the museum. So it's really the 21st, and it ends on July 1st, and you can find all the information about individual tickets, passes, uh, dinner and a movie tickets, because we do a dinner and a movie program, as well as parties and filmmaker hangouts and things at www.RoxburyInternationalFilmFestival.com. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Lisa Simmons from The Color of Film Collaborative.